in Belgium is trying to end his life because he cannot accept his sexuality. Sebastian, a name we're using to protect his identity, wants to be granted euthanasia on the grounds of extreme psychological suffering, and he has spoken exclusively to us on this program. He claims he is attracted to young men but cannot accept he is gay. He has suffered from depression and other mental health problems since he was a child. Euthanasia is legal in Belgium, but cases of it being used for psychiatric rather than physical suffering are rare. Well, we will hear from Sebastian shortly. But first, our reporter Jonathan Blake, who has spoken to him, is here. Um, Jonathan, why does he want to end his life? Well, as he sees it, he has no other option. As you said, he has struggled for some time, almost 20 years, with severe depression and other psychological problems. He's had treatment, he's had therapy, he's had counselling, he's had medication. Uh, but a couple of years ago, he uh, found out that it was possible to go through with euthanasia in Belgium, where there is a relatively, relatively liberal law for psychiatric cases. So he is now pursuing that. It's by no means certain, but he's very determined to go through with it. As you mentioned, he's struggling with his sexuality. He has been described in the media before as a paedophile, but he says that is wrong because he's attracted to adolescent boys of 15 and older and young men. Um, and he had a very difficult childhood and that is only one part of his condition. You, you said it's by no means certain that the euthanasia will go ahead. What is the legality around it in Belgium? Well, the law in Belgium is quite clear. It's been legal there since 2002 to end someone's life uh, to relieve suffering. Two doctors must agree in the case of physical illnesses, but if it's a psychiatric case like this one, three doctors must agree that euthanasia is the right option. And the key phrase in the letter of the law is that patients must be suffering constant and unbearable physical or mental suffering. You've spoken to him, haven't you? Yes, we have. And I'll just give you an idea uh, before we hear from Sebastian of how widely used the euthanasia law is in 2013 there were 1,807 confirmed euthanasia cases. This is the most recent year uh, for which there are figures available. 80% of those, so the vast majority, were for cases where people age 60 years and older. So the vast majority of elderly people who are usually suffering a physical uh, terminal illness uh, and by far the most common is cancer. So around 1,200 cases of people suffering cancer in 2013 uh, went through with euthanasia. But if we're talking about psychiatric problems, it's a tiny minority. 4% uh, of the total in 2013 of successful cases of euthanasia were for psychiatric illnesses. And that is the, the small group that Sebastian falls into. As we mentioned, you have spoken to him, so let, let's hear from him now. Yeah. My whole life has led me to this, really. My mother had dementia, so I wasn't right mentally. I'm talking about strange conversations and then not trusting the outside world. All that was instilled in me, so I was extremely lonely, extremely withdrawn, very inhibited physically. Scared to go out, scared of being seen, all the time scared, hugely shy. And growing up, when I was 15, I met a boy and I fell crazy in love. We were both 15 and it was just unbearable for me, you know? I didn't want to be gay. It's unbearable. No, I've fallen in love twice uh, afterwards, tw twice again. Um, an 18-year-old and a 22-year-old. However, I'm relieved to see that I'm capable of falling in love with boys who are out of adolescence. And despite everything, it's unbearable for me, this sexual orientation. I can't bear it. I'll never be able to bear it. It's insupportable for me. This uh, orientation sexual, I don't support it. I don't support it ever. Can you accept that you are homosexual? No. No. I don't accept it. <laughs> Euthanasia is an extreme choice. What has driven you to this point? Um, toujours, uh, à la mort. I've always thought about death. Looking back on my earliest memories, it's always been in my thoughts. What really comes next? How to control your own death? 
It's a permanent suffering, like being a prisoner in my own body. Not being able to go out, a constant sense of shame, feeling tired, being attracted to people you shouldn't be attracted to, as though everything were the opposite of what I would have wanted. And then there are huge difficulties with relationships because it's hugely difficult to communicate with someone so withdrawn. I discovered that euthanasia was available for psychiatric issues two years ago. So I tried to find out if it was an option for me. And here we are. How determined are you to pursue euthanasia? Si on me propose quelque chose de radicalement différent de tout ce que j'ai connu, if someone came up with something radically different to everything I've done, then yes, I'd try it. Avec des psychologues que je vais pouvoir me soigner, est-ce que ça existe? J'en ai pas l'impression. Looking after myself isn't about talking to psychologists. Does that exist? I don't think so. So, yes, if someone could give me some kind of miracle cure, why not? And you should also know that if the euthanasia committee denies a request for euthanasia, there's an offer of follow-up care for those who are in charge of euthanasia. So there are things to be tried, like electric shock, for example, which I haven't tried yet. There you go. On a parlé d'électrochoc, par exemple, chose que je n'ai pas encore essayé. Donc voilà. If you pass the assessments, have you thought about the final stages of the process of euthanasia and how it will happen and how you will approach that? C'est pas encore, euh, ça n'a pas encore été précisé. Euh, It's not clear yet where it will take place. I would like it to be done in a hospital. Maintenant. Euh, Le plus dur, c'est de l'annoncer à ma famille. The hardest thing now is telling my family. If I get a yes, that's what's going to be the most delicate. Le plus délicat. Et um, je pense surtout à mon père parce que... I'm thinking most of all of my father because we, we're not in touch with him anymore as a family. And it's just, that worries me. But no, the moment when they put a drip in my arm, I'm not worried about that. Ou je, je recevrai la, la perfusion dans mon bras, mais j'ai pas, je, 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 je ne suis pas inquiet par rapport à ça. Je... For me, it's just kind of anesthesia, except that you die. That's all I think about. I'm at peace with that. I'm much more at peace with the idea of dying like this and having to take my own life, because there are no easy solutions. So there you go. Parce que je ne trouve pas de, de solution douce. Donc voilà. Well, that was uh, Sebastian talking to you, Jonathan, a really powerful interview. He's just 39, isn't he? I mean, how do psychiatrists see this? It's a fascinating case, but there is broad agreement among the medical community in Belgium about the law on euthanasia. It, it's seen to be efficient, and, and there are very few cases which are controversial, and there's broad public support for it in the country as well. But it is the psychiatric cases such as this which do cause a bit of debate. And I spoke to a practising psychiatrist uh, in Brussels, Dr Caroline de Poit, who explained the level of debate among the medical community about euthanasia for psychiatric cases. We have meetings and debates about that because it's not quite divide us, but um, not everybody has the same advice about that. Um, so, some people say, "Okay, it's a good thing. You, you, people must have uh, must be free to choose and not to hurt themselves with suicide and and to to end their life uh, if it's unbearable." Other people say, "No, never, never. We cannot do that. It's never finished, and we are not God, and uh, we we cannot decide for." the other and it's a um, um, how do you say um, uh, suicide accompagné an accompanied suicide assisted suicide, as assisted suicide mm. and we don't want to do that doctors don't want to be the killers of the other and some people are just in between oh, okay it's interesting it, it's a good law for, for, for some people uh, it's um, um, for, for, for the um, um, to, to diminish the suffering of the people we cannot do in another way. But 
not for everybody, uh, n n not too easily. It must not be too easy to get euthanasia. And so we have the, the three, <laughs> the three way of, of thinking and we <laughs> discuss about it. And I think that uh, no one is right and no one is, no one is wrong. It's just a, a very difficult uh, law and it's a philosophical and ethical question, very deep and we can, well, yes, and there is no one, one answer, one good answer. So what is likely to happen from here, Jonathan? Well, Sebastian is at the very early stages of this process, and it is a long process for good reason, to make sure that patients don't go through with it for the wrong reasons. Uh, but he has had an initial uh, decision from a doctor that he can pursue it. Three doctors will need to agree that his case fits within the euthanasia law for him to be able to go through with it. Um, but as we heard from him, he is in a state of, as he describes it, permanent suffering uh, and feels trapped in his own body uh, and he remains determined to pursue euthanasia. Thank you, Jonathan. And uh, John has emailed to say, I hate being gay. I share Sebastian's dilemma most of the time. Without regular current support, I would have killed myself. I want to live, but the humiliation of being gay is still an enormous burden. I hate myself most of the time. Now, 